We introduce Neural Brushstroke Engine by Masha Shugrina, Chingying Li, and Sanya Fiddler. While many AI models are starting to paint on their own, we take the opposite approach and leverage AI to develop interactive brushes for human artists. Let's get our hands dirty with some digital paint. Neural Brushstroke Engine can mimic a variety of natural drawing media, retrieve a brush by a text query, or match style to a target artwork, all to allow unhindered interactive digital drawing by you. Digital drawing media has made a remarkable progress over the years. Typically, digital brushes are presented as curated lists of tools. But are these tools actually sufficient to match the diversity of physical media? Let us consider this simple Sharpie brush one would think it would be sufficient to have a single digital tool replicate its appearance. However, even this modest marker boasts a wide variety of looks when drawn on different paper. Curated lists of brushes also make it difficult to support applications such as matching a brush that can be used to paint in a specific style. Instead, we have well-developed technology that can do this painting for us cutting the artist out of the loop. While there exist example-based approaches for modeling different media, they either require extensive pre-processing of every input style or don't support interactive drawing or color control. In general, each of these methods requires capturing a specific medium that needs to be modeled. Other applications that are not possible today is finding tools using a text query. Yet, we're able to create entire images using text queries today. Our approach is inspired by the recent success of generative models for images, typically powered by continuous latent spaces where single latent code represents an image on the natural image manifold. The generator then becomes the artist rendering that image into something we can see. We instead aim to build the latent space of interactive drawing tools. Once a point on this manifold is selected, an artist can interactively draw strokes in the selected style. As any GAN-based method, our goal is to train our generator on completely unlabeled datasets, and we informally collect a dataset of traditional styles as well as more unusual crafts materials. Our system supports the basic requirements of any drawing interface, such as local control over stroke geometry, background separation and stroke compositing, ability to change brush color, as well as generation on any canvas size and interactive drawing. In order to allow generation on any canvas size, our generator operates on the patch level. We additionally develop a method to allow seamless strokes using patch-based approach as opposed to naive implementation. Thus, to train the patch-based generator, we break down our style datasets into sets of patches we use for training. The architecture of the patch-based generator is based on StyleGAN2, which I will briefly review. As any GAN, StyleGAN contains two neural networks, the generator and the discriminator. In StyleGAN, a latent code Z, sampled from some simple distribution, like a Gaussian, is mapped using a learned network into a more complicated space called W, which we refer to as the style space. This style code is then passed to every synthesis layer of the generator in order to control generation. The final synthesis layer produces a set of features which are then turned directly to RGB in order to produce the so-called fake image. Fake images as well as real images from the training dataset are then augmented and passed to the discriminator producing two scores which are used to train both the generator and discriminator in tandem. We need to make certain modifications to this architecture in order to allow interactive drawing. First, our synthesis must be conditioned on the input stroke patch G, which is defined as just black on white binary image. 
Finally, the generator produces a fake image, which is the stylized version of that same stroke. And our data set contains scribbles of the target medium. In order to allow conditioning on the input stroke G, we use a pre-trained encoder network and pass spatial feature maps into the layers of StyleGen in order to condition generation. At training time, the strokes G come from a synthetically generated geometry data set that is not paired in any way with the style data set and simply contains patches of randomly generated splines. Finally, I will explain how we parametrize the output of the GAN in order to allow user control of color. We replace the 2RGB layer with a 2 triad layer, which produces, instead of the RGB image, three colors, as well as three alpha maps A. These values are then composited deterministically in order to produce the final fake image. I will now go into the details of the two triad layer. The advantage of which is that at runtime, users can actually change the default color to any value that they like. A color triads is work by Shugrina et al. from 2020. And the basic idea is that colors of any source image can be approximated using a nonlinear blend of just three colors. We tested this approximation with a few items from our Scribble dataset and found that excellent approximations are possible without actually using the nonlinearity of color triads because strokes of a single media are actually pretty simple. Here, I will show how a color triad can be used for recoloring the scribble from our data set. For example, I can change its color. And we also found that one of the colors in the triad approximation most often corresponded to the background, allowing us to composite just by adding this approximation. I will show now another example. So in this case, we show that the stroke actually has two colors, a secondary color and a primary color, both of which can be changed if mapped uh, to a color triad representation. And similarly, we can composite this two color stroke now on another background. We use the intuition from these explorations to define a simplified triad layer in our network. Given the style code W, the two triad layer has a simple learn transformation that generates colors from this code. These are the default colors for a given brush. In addition, the input stroke, which has been processed by the previous layers of StyleGen, is mapped to the alpha generator, which is very similar to the last layer of StyleGen, except it produces not three RGB channels, but three alpha maps, which are guaranteed to sum up to one for every pixel. We can then multiply each color by its corresponding alpha map and sum up across pixels in order to produce the final colored stroke. Because we are training these layers, we can also impose a convention that the last alpha map is the background. We can then use the value of alpha 2 as the alpha producing clear strokes. We found that for different input geometry patches, this architecture produces very stable alpha maps, as in the background is always the same value for a given w, even if the input strokes are different. This stability allows us to draw on a patch level in a given style using this alpha compositing. And by changing custom colors at runtime, we're now able to give the artist ability to change the stroke color using either single color or two-tone recoloring shown before and on the bottom here. Now, conveniently, these alpha layers also provide a value that we can use to regularize the, the generator training to make sure that its output actually respects the input stroke G. Otherwise, there's nothing to enforce that the generator is not just hallucinating unrelated output strokes. Finally, we design the painting engine that allows using the patch-based generator interactively. Our design includes client and server, which can be on the same machine or different. On the client, we keep two canvases, the stroke canvas, which is hidden, where the user is drawing the plain black on white stroke, and the rendered canvas that's overlaid on top that includes the stroke stylized using our generator. And this has any user set dimensions. As the user is drawing a stroke, 
we keep track of the dirty window or the part of the canvas that needs to be updated. And once it exceeds a certain size, we issue a request image request to the server while providing also the location of the requested patch and the plain black on white stroke in that region. The server then responds with a returned image that may include different coordinates, for example, if there is a margin. If we apply patch-based generation naively, this is what our results would look like. By simply choosing to crop a fraction of each output image, we remove a lot of the effects of padding in the generator architecture, and it looks better, but definitely not good enough. In order to support truly seamless generation, we augment our server with two feature canvases. One of them is the feature mask, which keeps track of parts of the canvas that have already been painted. And the second is the feature canvas, which keeps track of the features that already have been drawn in a given style for selected layer of style again. We use soft falloff as well as the feature mask multiplied together in order to figure out how to blend the features being generated for a novel patch with the features that are already on the canvas and blend inside the generator architecture. Once the blending is performed, the output features are then used to update the feature canvas and the image that used the blended features is sent back to the client. We found that for vast majority of styles, this works really well and the scale of feature blending is the target resolution divided by two. Once trained, the continuous latent space of drawing tools allows selecting a brush and then using a pre-trained network to interactively paint in that style, our system supports local control over stroke geometry, as well as other requirements of a drawing interface. And any trained model can train out in a wide variety of styles. Here are some random styles. We also tried embedding training styles into our model to understand how well it covers the training distribution and found that results are quite faithful to the input and allow interactive drawing with those styles. Now let's look how well embedding of styles generalizes to styles unseen by the model. Here we embed styles from style one dataset into the model trains on style two and vice versa. And we're able to see that, for example, the style 2 model on the left is able to replicate natural drawing media even though it has never seen paint or crayons. Similarly for the style 1 model, although we note that of course the style 2 samples are very challenging, for example, Legos and beads, and there's nothing in our generator architecture that will allow spatial consistency of such features. Nonetheless, the results look quite compelling. We also note that the embedded brushes are very different from the closest training patches in our training set, showing really good generalization of our latent space. In addition, because our brushes live in a continuous space, we're able to apply some cost function and gradient-based optimization in order to find brushes fitting some criteria. For example, we can now enable applications not possible before, such as searching for a brush using text. We're also able to optimize brushes for specific artwork. Now the user can paint new art themselves in the style of the target. This opens up novel interactive possibilities for digital drawing. 
More generally, we're excited to take insights and techniques from generative modeling in order to allow novel possibilities for AI-powered interactive tools.